Hey, Jordan, good to be back with you again. Hey, I, I wondered what your take was on Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan. I mean, it was real. And she's traveling all throughout Asia. And she's kind of, uh, she's kind of rattling everybody's, uh, everybody's she's rattling the sabers and I mean, shaking stuff up. And what's interesting is the Republicans are like, we now love Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> it's so interesting. I think about that. I was surprised. Part of me is like, okay, go over there. You know what? Show your stuff. You got, you know, you, you got only one. So many times around this globe, she's like, I'm going to go out over there. I got the power. Uh, I, I'm very curious. I'm not smart enough to know what the uh, long term effects of a trip like this, but it feels like a bold action. And the fact that McConnell and a good group of folks were like, no, this is what happens. We support her. That that kind of blew my mind as well. I, I was like, this feels like a big unforced error. She is going to get blasted for. <laughs> think, well, you know to, what? Isn't it? So, I mean, she's not exactly. Well, she, first of all, I've known her for a long time. She has got more energy than most people 30 or 30 years younger than she is. And here she is going from country to country in Asia. I mean, she's just, it's just an amazing uh, moment when you think about, and how, what, a, what a, a terrific person she is as a leader, you know, in the Congress and in the Democratic Party. It's, it's really, really something. It's she's also tough. Post COVID, you know, or whatever we're in right now, you know, we were all locked out for a couple of years. People want to travel. She just her travel comes with more consequences. I wish I wish my trip to Tulum would would cause armies to to do excursions <laughs> on the the shores of Tulum. But you know, it, but we each have different effects in the way that we travel. I'm just I'm impressed that she got out. Hey, Jordan, you know, they had an election yesterday in uh, Kansas, and it was the result uh, in regard to abortion, I thought, was uh, was really kind of surprising. I wondered if you would had a chance to take a look at that, and did you have a reaction? I did. I mean, I think the, the initial things that I'm seeing there, it does feel like people showed up. I think it is a obviously an issue people care about. I was surprised. Kansas didn't feel like the first state that would stand up and and vote against some of the actions to take away these um, these rights. And so I think for, for those who are pro-choice and are frustrated with what's happening, I think they are looking at this as a positive sign that it's it's not a winning issue. And I, I'm very curious, I'm very curious what you think Republicans will take from this because it does seem like, um, I, I was looking at, they were, they were breaking down all the, all the counties and the, very, very Trump state. All these yeah. counties, very, very, very Trumpy. But you, you bring an issue like this. Well, it'll be forefront. interesting. What, the, what if the Kansas legislature was going to go and, and change the law and pose restrictions? What they will do now? Mm -hmm. uh, because you know we haven't. I don't think we've ever really thought about these initiative petitions. You can't do them everywhere, but you can do them a lot of places. And in that case, what what this could do is that people might say, "Well, let's put it on the ballot and see what people think." Mm -hmm. And uh, and that will send a strong message, and perhaps we'll have the force of law. I don't. I think, you know, it's the early stages. We're going to have to see how this all kind of works out. What do you What do you think if we take the uh, emotional side to this issue around the reversal of Roe v. Wade? If we take that off the table and just look from a tactical perspective, it's something that uh, Republicans have been pushing for quite some time. Do you think this could turn out to be a tactical faux pas that it's really going to hurt them in the midterms and some of the overall goals that they're hoping to achieve? You know, it's going to I think it will it will probably mean uh, more turnout from Democrats and perhaps the loss of some suburban Republican women. I mean, that will be an impact. But will it be such as it'll change the results in the U.S. House? Um, I don't I really don't think so. But it could affect the Senate. The other problem with the Senate is that the Republicans have some really some very poor candidates. Are you so for, for the first you... <laughs> for the first time, guy could really play football. But for the first time, you know, I think uh, there's a real question about w whether Republicans win the Senate. I think they will win the House. And then what's interesting after all that happens is who is Joe Biden for the last two years of this first term, and how does he behave and what does he do? It's it's going to be that'll be something very interesting to watch because he will be forced now. It, you know, in my view, it could make Biden back to what he normally has been, which is sort of a moderate kind of a guy. And uh, but we see it's it's still, you know, from between now and 2024, it's like a thousand years in politics, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we'll see.